Hello friends. Some years ago I had a business growing hydroponic vegetables. I had about a hundred square meter of greenhouse and eleven one by six meter long containers. I had lettuce, watercress, tomatoes and other vegetables. Some of these were floating in the nutrients and the others were on a substrate. Those that uh, ended up much better as you can see in this image were the lettuce that is practically bigger than me. In this video I'm not going to teach you hydroponics. Despite I'm very knowledgeable about the topic, I don't consider myself an expert and I don't have the equipment or the place to be able to show you how it's done. However, I have to create an add-on to my turtle pond. Uh, this is a refugium and to take the water to this refugium, the system I'm going to use is very similar to the NFT system or nutrient film system for hydroponics. And so I want to take advantage of this video and show you how it can be done very economically, very cheap, using alternative materials to those that are sold in, the, in businesses. And in case that you want to uh, build a hydroponic system someday. For those who don't know these hydroponic methods with, uh, without substrate, we have basically two. The floating system where the lettuce float on top of the nutrient solution thanks to expanded polystyrene and the nutrient film system where the roots hang in the air. In the first system the roots are permanently inside the nutrient solution and if there's not enough oxygen in the water the plants will not grow well and they'll get ill. On the other hand in the nutrient film system the roots are just submerged partially in the nutrient solution. Only five millimeters thick is this film of solution running below the roots. This allows for a high level of oxygen both reaching the solution and reaching the roots. Considering the high cost of commercial material for these nutrient film systems, usually people use these kind of tubing for sanitary uses which are much cheaper. However, these kind of tubes, when filled with water, they're quite effective with the floating roots hmm? because they fill with water till there and the roots are completely submerged in the water. But these systems are very inefficient for the nutrient film system where the nutrient film should be no more than five millimeters from the bottom. And that leaves a very small amount of nutrient solution flowing through the roots. For this reason, for an NFT system, it's much better to use these kind of electrical ducts that are flat at the bottom and not very high. And this way the roots will be covered by all the solution flowing through the duct. An electrical duct or trunking duct like this one, 100 millimeters wide and 50 millimeters high and 2 meters long, can be quite expensive when we buy it new. However, when people are doing electrical refurbishments or renovations, they might throw these away and we can reuse them in a hydroponic system. These ducts bring a cover that are inserted in those notches and stays fixed there. However, for hydroponics, it's much more convenient to have the cover simply on top of the, the duct and fix it with silicone. That way, we can lift the cover up, examine the interior of the duct, clean it, remove any detritus we find there, and do any maintenance that is necessary. And if we are keeping plants that are more than yearly, we might need to cut the roots to keep the base and the, the solution flowing correctly. So being able to lift up the, the cover and removing the roots is a useful thing. Lettuce is a plant that takes at least three months before we can harvest it. And in that time it can grow an enormous amount of roots. These electrical ducts are not designed to contain liquids. So if we want to close these ends or put a curve here or increase the length of the ducts for more than two meters 
we will have to join them together. And we can do that using silicone, special silicone for aquariums. As these materials are made of PVC, silicone has no problem in sticking them together and sealing them very well. However, in some cases we can even use uh, PVC adhesive if we need something firmer to hold the pieces together. The connections that are sold in, the, in businesses, the corner bands, the end caps, they're very expensive, practically as expensive as a whole uh, duct. So it's much better if we make our own from pieces of duct. And that's what I'm going to show you now. End caps to close the ends of the ducts. To close the ends, we must cut the sides at about 5.5 centimeters from the end, or a bit higher than the height of the duct. We remove the sides, leaving a small piece that we can use as a reinforcement. We heat up the sides with a blowtorch or a heat pistol to leave them as flat as possible. We cut one centimeter of the reinforcement bars and with a screwdriver we remove these bits of bars. We heat up the bottom of the duct and we bend it up till it stays perfectly square with the end of the duct. We use a piece of wood to help us put it as square as possible against the end of the duct till the PVC cools off. Once the PVC is cold we heat up the parts on the sides and we bend them in onto the walls, onto the side walls of the duct. Joining two ducts. To join two ducts we can simply put silicone between them and that's it. But even if we had the ducts held on firmly to a base, there still is a chance we're going to have water leaking out of there. So to be sure we won't have any leaks, it's better to stick both ends with a joiner in between. For this we will cut a piece of duct some 10 centimeters or more in length. We cut these parts off at the top, leaving as most we can on a horizontal line. We heat up the corners at the top and we flatten those parts. We cut off the reinforcement bars that are on the other side. We file down the surface to leave it perfectly uniform. Then we heat up the bottom corners of the duct or the joiner to open it up and fit it around one of the ducts so it fits perfectly well on all its surface. In this point is where it's much better if instead of using use a, a duct as a mold, we should have a bit of wood the precise size of the duct so that we can form the joiner around that mold. If we put a hot PVC joiner onto a duct, the heat might deform our duct. To ensure the duct is perfectly centered on the mold, both mold and duct must be marked with pencil on their center. Once it's cold, we sandpaper the surfaces, we clean them. And we stick. We can stick them using silicone all over the surface, which I think would be quite acceptable. However, we could also stick them with PVC adhesive, which probably is a more permanent adhesion and it's quicker. In any case, we must be very careful to make sure that they're perfectly aligned both laterally and lengthwise. Additionally, I recommend sticking on one duct first and then the other one and then filling in the space there with silicone. Corner fixtures. To make a corner bend we have two options. If we have enough vertical space the most simple thing we can do is put one duct on top of the other one and create a waterfall from one duct to the other. 
either on the side or from below. For this, all we have to do is close the end with end cap on both ducts and make holes in the top duct so that the water falls inside the bottom duct. If we don't have enough vertical space to put one on top of the other, we will have to place them face to face. But in this case, the reinforcement we have to put there will not be the same as if we joined them lengthwise. In my opinion, the best thing we can do is cut a big length of duct and give it the right form to keep the corners held on tightly one against the other, as I show you here. Now, it's not perfect if I just put it loose there, there's some spaces in between, so when I stick this together with a PVC adhesive or with silicone, we have to clamp it together there to make sure we get the minimum spaces in between and we can seal it well. Considering I haven't stuck these two together yet, I will do some cuts here, there and there, hmm? but I'll tell you later why I'm doing this. A joint like this one can be quite weak when it has a flow of water permanently hitting against the wall there, despite we put a, a reinforcement to hold it together. That's why it's a good idea to put a curved piece of PVC inside the joint to make the flow of water go around there softly without so much stress on the joint. Finally, we have two kinds of outlets, from the side and from below. When it's through the sides, we make holes between the reinforcements in the duct.
we cut some flaps from these holes down to the bottom and after applying heat we can bend these flaps so they drive the water in the direction we want. We can even stick a larger flap of PVC there. Finally we put silicone on all the open edges. From below means making a hole in the bottom of the duct where we push a PVC tube through and stick it on with silicone. The flare of this pipe can be made with heat. Well, that's it. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please remember give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it, leave your comments and thanks for watching. Bye bye.